So now Michael Jordan, uh, giving his uh, Hall of Fame speech on Friday, uh, this, this has created a lot of controversy because you're supposed to be gracious, you're the best of all time, you're supposed to be extra gracious, mm -hmm. you're supposed to thank everybody left and right. That's not the direction Jordan decided to go. Let's listen to clip number seven here uh, as he talks about Jerry Krause and the Chicago management a little bit, and then uh, we'll see if we're on his side or against him. Let's go. The Bulls, the whole Bulls, Bulls organization, you know, they did a, a great justice for me and for all my teammates. And believe me, I had a lot of teammates over the 14 years that I played for the Bulls. And, you know, I respected each and every one of them. I just wanted to win, you know, no matter how you look at it. And then along came Doug Collins, who was caught in the whole mix of this Jerry Krause and, and uh, Jerry Reinsdorf. And, you know, at the same time, he, you know, when I was trying to play in the summertime, he said, well, you know, you're a part of the... The organization, the organization said you can't play in the summertime. I said, Doug, you hadn't read the fine print in my contract. In my contract, say I had the love of the game clause. That means I can play anytime I want, any place I want. <laughs> and Doug looked at me and said, Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's how we became, you know, a little closer in terms of Doug Collins and myself. And you know, Jerry Cross is right there, and Jerry's not here. Obviously, I don't, you know, I don't know who inv invited him. I didn't, but uh, uh, I hope he understands. I hope he understands it, it goes a long way, and he was a very competitive person. I was a very competitive person. He said organization wins championships. I said, I didn't see organization playing with the flu in Utah. I didn't see him playing with, you know, with the bad ankle. Uh, granted, granted, I think organization put together a team, but at the end of the day, the team's got to go out and play. You know, so in essence, I think the players win the championship. And the organization has something to do with it, don't get me wrong. But don't try to put the organization above the players because at the end of the day, the players still got to go out there and perform. You guys got to pay us, but I still got to go out and play. Now, so, so I'm getting good reaction from the crowd. They're laughing, they're applauding, etc. But some people were seething. And then that caused a lot of controversy. Obviously, not kind words for the Bulls organization there or Jerry Krause. Uh, now, I think he's wrong, actually, because the organization has to build that team, including picking you, right? So if you don't build the right, I mean, do organizations win uh, championships? How about in football? Where it's, of course it's the Steelers organization that built that team, right? It's all about the organization. Now, basketball is a little different. They only have five players, you know, on the court at the same time, so it becomes more of a player's game, right? Uh, but the real question is, should he have gone after these people in the speech where he's supposed to be gracious? Now, let's give you one more where he goes after somebody else and then we'll uh, discuss the controversy. You know, and for someone like me who achieved a lot in, a, in over the time of my career, you look for any kind of messages that people may say or do to get you motivated to play the game of basketball at the highest level because that, that is when I feel like I excel at, at my best. And my last example of that, and the last one that you guys probably have seen, I hate to do it to him, but he, he's such a nice guy. And uh, when I first met Brian Russell, John and uh, John and Carl, should remember this? I was in in, in Chicago in 1994. We, I was working out for baseball. They came down for a workout and shoot around. I came over to say hello. And at this time, I had no thoughts of coming back and playing the game of basketball. And Brian Russell came over to me and said, "You know what, man? Why did you quit?" Why'd you quit? You know I can guard you. If I ever see you in a pair of shorts, if I ever see you in a pair of shorts, <laughs> you remember this, John? It, and <laughs> so when I did decide to come back in 1995, uh, and then we played Utah in '96, I'm at the Central Circle, and we and, and Brian Russell sitting next to me, and I look over to Brian. I said, "You remember this conversation you made in 1994 about?" But when you, I wish, I think I can guard you, I can shut you down, I would love to play against you. Well, you're about to get your chance. <laughs> and believe me, ever since that day, he got his chance. I don't know how succeeding he was, but uh, I think he had his chance, and believe me, I relished on that point, and from this day forward, if I ever see him in shorts, I'm coming at him. <laughs> I don't think John Stockton enjoyed that story. It didn't look like he enjoyed it. And Stockton also gave a very classy speech at his Hall of Fame, from what I read. I didn't see it, okay, his induction. But now, okay, look, he's not supposed to go after these guys, okay? 
we already know you beat the living crap out of Brian, <laughs> Byron Russell. Okay, we all saw it. You don't have to remind us, mm -hmm. right? And we all know you don't like Jerry Krause, and that's probably not the best time for it. Now, having said that, screw it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Because Hall of Fame speeches are boring. Yeah, and why does he have to be gracious? Like, that's just a standard that's set by society. Let him say what he wants to say. It's his damn speech. That's right. It's his <laughs> damn speech. No, anyway, I found, I think the Byron Rus Russell story was kind of cute. I know I know it's a dig on him, but it, a little bit, but, but he's a grown-ass man, exactly. and he got his ass schooled by Jordan, and that's the story of Jordan's career. If he didn't cover it, then he's not really giving you his career, because mm -hmm. that's what he did. He loved, he, he'd get competitive like that, and he loved to beat other people. I got a couple of stories on that, but first I want you to hear. This is the problem. People get sick of the, the um, you know, the politically correct answer that athletes have to give. Oh, you know, the team is a great team. You know, we played them hard. They really pushed me to my limits. We were just lucky to come out of there with a victory. And they go, oh, yeah, of course you say that. But when they don't do that, you get mad at them. Yeah. Which yeah. one do you want? Do you want the truth yeah. or do you want that bullshit that you keep complaining about? I like the truth. Yeah, I love it. Now, that's Because that's, I'm one of the people who complains about that same you know, same Nonsense. vanilla answer that everybody yeah. always gives. Anyway, Bar uh, Brian Russell, he, he, uh, he responded because he didn't see it live, but he started getting texts and phone calls. And he said, I'll play his ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a call out for him to come and play me. He can come here in his private jet and come play. He's got millions of dollars. He can pay for the jet. He can meet me at the recreation center in Calabasas. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. We should um, go hang out with him. We him. could have Mark Jackson <laughs> do the commentating. We could have Mitch Richmond do the officiating. We can put it on TV and see if Michael still got it. Oh, now See, if he says that, man, the problem is Jordan's going to take him up on that offer. Yeah, that's it, coming yeah, to exactly. a pay-per-view uh, yeah. near great. you soon. I'd love to see it. And, uh, he said, out of all the people he came across, he thought about me. I'm happy to be in his Hall of Fame speech. So he wasn't actually mad. He's saying, but yeah, but he's Good. serious about. I think probably about playing. He said. So he also said, I keep my basketball shorts on, son. See, that's that's the type of response that I like. Because he doesn't take himself too seriously. Like, calm the hell down. Th I, don't, I don't find his speech controversial at all. No, no, because now we're having fun. No, right. no, before you tell the story, there's one thing. The reason why everybody's flipping out, not everybody, but the percentage of people that are flipping out and mad and saying he's a jerk, the whole theme of his speech, he told 10 stories. Uh -huh. The whole theme of his speech, he said, I had a fire in me the whole time since I was a kid. My brothers and my little sister, they all were competing against me. And... It just pushes you to do better. He said, so he said, there was this thing that happened when I first came in the league that made me want to do harder. This coach made me want to go harder. The guy who I got cut for in high school, I wanted to prove him this, this, and that, and said, like, you know who you just got rid of? He said, that's where my competitive nature came from, which is why I've accomplished what I've accomplished. So he just told story after story after story. All he was saying was that motivated me. They can have their opinion, but I'm looking at it from my perspective. He was very clear about where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. It was just he said that motivated me. This motivated me. Brian Russell came and said, "I'm gonna guard you." That motivated me. Look what happened. Yeah, you know what? He's right. That what and that, as I said, that's the story of his career. I think he might have even brought his if I read if I remember this right, brought his the coach who had not started him or something, mm -hmm. and then pointed him out and was like, "What happened now?" Oh, that's so awesome! <laughs> I, no, all of a sudden I love him. No, I do, I do. That's the type of personality I love. Okay, now g here's one of the Michael Jordan stories. There's a million of these, but mm -hmm. uh, when he's with the Bulls, Horace Grant has a ping pong table in his basement or wherever, and, and the Bulls are kidding around, and and mm -hmm. Jordan's never played ping pong before, so he plays with Horace Grant. Horace Grant kicks his ass because Jordan's never played ping pong before. He's like boom and be beats him. Jordan gets so angry. He goes out, buys a ping pong table instantly. Okay, uh -huh. that day, he sets it up, and he practices, 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 until he comes back. He beats every single one of the Bulls, including Horace Grant, until they don't want to play with him anymore. Oh, I love him. <laughs> no, I love him. I, I love him. I, I, I can't even tell. But like, you know how you talk about how you love strong people? Like, in my opinion, he's strong. Like, I love that competitive nature. You know how many times he cheated on his wife? Okay, listen, we don't need to get into his personal life because right now I'm liking him. So. <laughs> yeah, look, I, look. the bottom line on this is obviously there's an enormous upside to it. That's part of the reason why he was the biggest winner in basketball history, mm -hmm. right? Now, don't give me the Russell stuff, okay, when they had eight people in the league or eight teams in the league, right? Uh, and the downside is, yeah, you can be a jerk. And then in the end, nobody wants to play ping pong with you, mm -hmm. okay, because you are made it too mental. Right? And you're too crazy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, so upside, downside. Bottom line, he made the NBA. He made that speech. He made everything more interesting. Mm -hmm. And for that, you got to give it to him. So 
uh, Young Turks are in favor of the speech, whether you like it or you don't. <laughs> All right, we're out of time. Uh, we got so many more, but we'll have to save them for tomorrow. But when we come back in the post-game show, our behind-the-scenes look at the Young Turks and our photo shoot, and Anna and I will uh, commentate on. Watch more clips at theyoungturks.com.